So I'm Nancy G, and I'm the Waltham Human-Animal Interaction Research Manager, and I'm also a professor of psychology at the State University of New York, Fredonia. I do research on human-animal interaction, and I organize and collaborate on a large portfolio of research that's actually international. So we've got projects going in the UK, in the US, um, Australia, a variety of places around the world. I know you've worn a lot of hats. <laughs> So, so this morning I did, uh, I organized a symposium. At the symposium we had two presentations. I did the first presentation, which was on the topic of uh, dog ownership compared to non-dog ownership and the degree to which dog owners are more physically active than non-dog owners. So I presented the results of one of our collaborations that was in the United Kingdom. So we had researchers um, in England in, and in Scotland and also in the U.S. working on the project. So the results of the study showed that dog owners take more steps, they spend more time walking at a moderate cadence, uh, and they spend less time in, in sedentary behavior. So owning a dog seems to be associated with very healthy behaviors. Is there any policies that you can see that would help you forward this research to older adults or the general public? So when it comes to policy, um, it boils down to access, access to transportation and housing. And this is particularly true for older adults who are often in assisted living residence, and they have different policies depending upon the facility. So in some cases, pets are welcome, and in other cases, they're not welcome. And so what we're trying to do is to find some research that supports this idea that having animals is either good for older adults, or perhaps we need to be a little bit more careful about how animals are situated in those environments. So as of right now, policy change is tough. That's a hard thing to accomplish, but this research is laying a foundation for making the appropriate kinds of changes to those policies that would be in the best interest of both the older adults and the animals. Possibly related to that, um, the welfare of the animals when an older adult can't care for their animal anymore? Yeah, so animal welfare is a, is a really important issue. And it's a tough call because what we need to do is we need to have somebody sort of with eyes on the ground who can watch the animal and make sure that the animal is being well cared for, is receiving veterinary care, food, getting proper exercise. And when that isn't happening, when the older adult can't do that, we need to have a backup plan in place. And some communities have some great programs in place. They have programs that help older adults feed their pets, which is great. It helps them retain their pets for a longer period of time when they can't really afford to do that. There there are programs also that um, um, college students, for instance, will come in and help care for pets when an older adult is ill and has to go into the hospital. And so part of what we're doing is, again, we're providing the research that can form this basis for perhaps encouraging development of these kinds of programs to benefit older adults and help them retain their pets longer than they might be able to without these sorts of policies or programs in place. Have I have a dog. I have two dogs, yes. I have two poodles. Have you ever used them as therapy dogs? Great question. I actually trained therapy dogs for a number of years and when I got in, when I got my start in research, I was taking my dogs to visit uh, older adults and also preschool children. And I also trained my dogs in agility and competed um, in the AKC Nationals. My dog took second place and we were on Animal Planet and it's probably more than you wanted to know. but. Yeah. I did do therapy work with my dogs and it was a ton of fun. What I found is uh, you, get, you get a lot of parents and teachers and teachers' aides who, th who really feel as though it's making a difference for the, for the children, which is great, but it boils down to anecdotal evidence. And so this is why the research is so important at this point, because we need to have more than just the anecdotes. We need to have more than people saying, this worked for this child or this adult in this situation. We need to find out across which situations and under what circumstances it is most beneficial. And at the same time, coming back to animal welfare, we need to make sure that when we're implementing these programs, we're caring for the animals involved and making sure they get adequate rest, that they get, you know, obviously well-fed, lots of opportunity for exercise, and generally that they aren't feeling stressed. 
The, the therapy dog event is a, is a great event because it really draws people in. It gets people to just walk over because so many people have pets. I mean, pet ownership is ubiquitous in Western society. So they come over and they're petting a dog and they get an opportunity to find out about the research that we're doing. So it draws them in. They get to come over, pet the dog, make some nice connections, and then also find out, hey, there's some science going on there and they can come and see what kind of science we're presenting at the conference. Maybe a sign, but did you notice how many people wanted their picture taken with the dog? Yeah, they did. They did. They that really do want their pictures taken. It, and it's great. It's great PR. It went out on Twitter. It was, you know, it was a wonderful opportunity for people to see that there really is more than just petting dogs. That gets the door open. That gets people interested. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, these are all researchers. You get them interested in the topic, and before you know it, they come and, and they're starting to do HAI research. It's really great. I'm also going to be a collaborator on this brand new GSA Waltham HAI or Human Animal Interaction Award that was given to Don Carr and Natalie Sachs Erickson. I'm really excited about this particular project because it uses the health retirement study. And this is a, a huge study that has information about pets and pet ownership in the study. So we can now sort of dig deeper into the topic of older adults and how pets impact things like psychological variables and the degree to which they're socially connect connected and depression and how often they go out and go for walks. And so this particular project is very exciting to us because of its potential to use this massive survey. It is the largest of its kind and we've got pet information in this survey. So I can't wait to see the results of this study.